I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Jessica Kahn, who is the Teacher of the Year representative for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. But we also have Tuck and Gigi with us, and Jessica will explain what she does and why we have some friends here with us. Absolutely. Um, so I am a teacher for a special education program, and that program works with kids with special education needs such as mental health, behavior, um, social emotional learning. And so Gigi in the blue vest is a facility dog trained mm -hmm. by Canine Companions for Independence, and she, um, she provides specific skill teaching like how to be, be calm in the classroom and how to regulate your emotions because she gets to do that all day. And then Tux, who is in sniffing training. a leaf, um, <laughs> he is in training to become a service dog for the same organization. Um, and he might work with somebody in a wheelchair or he might work, in, um, work with children as well. We don't know yet. We'll see when he gets a little bit older, hopefully mm -hmm. what path he'll take. So he won't stay with us. Gigi is with our class all the time. So explain how the dog helps. Uh, helps you know, in you know, calming yeah. children or, or just people in general? Well, I think that um, the dogs, specifically for my students, I have students who will say to me, I want Gigi, when they're upset, they'll say, I want Gigi, I want the dog. And then they see that she only comes to them when they're calm. And so then they'll say, oh, if I stay calm, I get to have Gigi time. Um, we also use the dogs actually to teach how we learn. So specifically, we'll have, um, teach Tux a new skill. So we might do something like teaching him. When we got him, he was, believe it or not, really tiny. And um, we had to teach him how to sit or how to um, roll over. And to do that, we talked about the data, just like we do with the kids when they're learning math facts. They take the data on it and we say, oh, what are you gonna learn with that? And what's your goal? And, and then with the dogs, we actually practice, 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 and they see it doesn't come right away. And that's why it's hard when you're learning your math facts is it doesn't come right away. You have to practice just like the dog. Mm. So we use them both for learning theory as well as just um, a really nice reinforcer in the classroom. I have worked with students that have some sensory needs. And so getting used to touching the fur um, is good for them, brushing the dog. Even some kids with um, more occupational therapy needs to throw the ball. Um, we also work on communication all the time. And so if you look, Gigi is just staring at me, mm -hmm. and we talk about she doesn't use words to communicate, but we can imagine what's in her thought bubble, and that's a social thinking construct that I find really beneficial in the classroom, and so we know that Gigi is thinking about me because she's looking at me. Of course, when I'm teaching, that's what I'm hoping the kids are doing too, is they're looking to where they're getting their information. So explain the impact uh, of, there's been a really intense focus most recently on social and emotional uh, wellness. Yes. Explain the impact that you're seeing with the intensified focus on that. So what I'm seeing is, is pretty exciting in that um, things that I used to only see in my classroom where we start the day with a morning, um, morning meeting where everybody greets everybody. everybody. Every student's name is heard every morning. They see be, they're able to be seen or those little check-ins that we do used to only happen in a class like mine. And now we're seeing that across the schools because um, the teachers and the administrators are really seeing the value in that. When students' social emotional needs are met, they're able to focus on their learning of academic competencies. Um, I think social emotional competencies like um, being able to self-regulate your emotions or being able to, um, uh, how to uh, the, so, the specific social skill of how to make friends and how do we go do that back and forth communication are really just embedded in our academics in the same way that we teach perseverance and we teach um, our kind of how do we learn in school. Those all have to be specifically taught. They just don't come as naturally. I think the other big thing that um, I'm seeing as a result of it and certainly is in the research is that the impact of secondary trauma on teachers and that's what I'm personally really concerned about. Um, our, we're losing teachers very quickly in our field. They're not even staying five years and um, I think one of the reasons for that are the social emotional needs of the students. Um, not just students who have had trauma in the background, but students that have anxiety and depression that are at these very high performing schools and maybe have really supportive, wonderful homes mm -hmm. and unfortunately are, are really suffering. Um, and then we're seeing the impact of the bullying and um, 
dropping out and suicides. So what you're saying is the impact on the teacher emotionally mm -hmm. from dealing with many students with emo high emotional needs. Yes. So it, they're kind of feel, it's, absorbing it. It's the it teachers and, and they call that secondary trauma. Mm -hmm. So they're having the secondary trauma of working with these students. Um, so how do you address that? So I think that um, a couple of things. One is social emotional learning at the pre-service stage hasn't really been there yet, it's starting to come along so that our universities and our teacher preparation programs are able to start um, teaching, the, preparing the teachers on how to set boundaries so that we aren't becoming completely enmeshed with our students. And they're learning how to provide that learning environment where the kids can take a break, then that's a really mentally healthy thing to do. And then the teachers need that opportunity also in a school site. They need to be able to ta tag out and say, I need a break, I need to go over here. Um, I also think that if we create more learning communities among teachers where they're developing those competencies to teach the skills and also take care of themselves. Um, I'm a big believer in mindfulness. That works for me. I don't think it works for every teacher. So. You think uh, teachers don't do enough for their own self-care? Exactly. Yeah. I think that it's really important and, and you know, I think we're seeing kind of the mental health issues um, across society. I don't think it's just in schools. So of course teachers are going to experience all of those same things. So what, what inspired you to become a counselor and to work with, with children and people this way? Um, what actually inspired me was I didn't, wasn't planning to be a teacher. I went and um, needed a couple credits in undergraduate school and <laughs> they had a summer camp at a psychiatric hospital. And I went and I found the kids so fascinating. I loved the kids and I kind of said, well, this was a facility, this was a long time ago and it was a lockup facility. And, and I thought there has to be a better way to help these kids become members of our society. And, and I just became really intrigued with that. Um, and I feel like now I, I have a better grip of that and it's providing a safe, emotionally safe, physically safe, academically challenging environment for them. And uh, you get to apply everything you've learned every day in different ways because yes. people that you're, that you're coming across um, all have different needs. Everybody has a different need and a lot of um, thinking about, that's what, I'm never bored. <laughs> Absolutely never bored, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, you have to be super flexible and I have two assistants in my classroom who make every day a joy and we all have different skills and I'm able to say, ooh, this student really needs that nurturing that I may not be as good at but I have another teacher who's excellent and Ms. Molina is gonna nurture. I have this student over here who needs some real consistency and having it presented exactly the same way. Miss Richardson, she is gonna nail that. And so I've got this team that is able to really just work beautifully. So what does it mean to you to be named as a teacher of the year for your district? I am completely honored and um, I was very surprised. I think that there are so many great teachers. Um, I hope I can represent our district well. And I, I think that the, the really wonderful thing is that the things that I'm most passionate about, social and emotional learning and um, setting those high academic standards for all of our students and being, in, excuse me, being inclusive um, is something that I have an opportunity to talk about. So what would you say to someone you know, uh, who is considering a career doing what you're doing, you know, teaching, counseling, yeah. working with kids and their emotional needs? What would you say to them to kind of have them consider it? I think they, that the biggest thing they need to do is get in and observe and spend some time working with the kids. Um, I think that sometimes people think, oh, you teach, they say to me, you teach special ed, you must be so patient. And I'm always kind of going, you know, I'm not that patient. I'm actually really stubborn and I have to try a lot of things for a long time till I figure out what's gonna work with each kid. Um, I love problem solving. And so I would ask them if they like problem solving because teaching is not a job that you go to and do the same thing every day. You get to go in and you get to connect and have a relationship with each of those students. And, um, and that's a joy. But go in and see if it's really for you because you may say it's not. And that's really important to know before you go through the whole program. Yeah, and not for that, if not for that summer program yeah. years ago, you would I would have had no today. idea. I had to try it to find yeah. out. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you and thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you for bringing Gigi and Tuck. <laughs> Absolutely. We've been speaking with Jessica Kahn, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.